Hi everyone, this is the start of what I believe is an exciting series uh, where I'm going to discuss MIMO and uh, I'm going to explain how normal MIMO works but uh, what I'm really going to explain is some of the hidden secrets of MIMO and I only discovered it very recently when I started looking at Wavefront and the comparison with other antennas so it's really something I didn't quite realize until I started looking more deeply into MIMO but to understand all of it I first want to explain the MIMO box now the MIMO box and I'm going to do everything for 2x2 two two as a start. So you've got one antenna and another antenna. Um, then you've got inside any MIMO uh, router. You've got this thing called, which I call the MIMO box. And here you've got two receivers or two transceivers, TX, RX. In other words, you've got two essentially modems. Because the whole idea with MIMO is that we want to get two data streams, if possible. Now, what happens between here and here is the real question. And the answer is this MIMO box is a clever guy. It can take this guy and this guy. So it can take both of antenna 1 and antenna 2 to one of the receivers. So this is TXRX2 and this is 1. So it can provide a signal from both, but most importantly, it can actually alter the phase and the magnitude of each of these signals coming on these antennas. And that may sound technical. Um, phase is really just delaying a signal a little bit, and the, the amplitude means it can give you a third of the signal and two thirds of the signal. The same happens towards this side. So this guy, will also get a little bit of each antenna, not a little bit, as much as the box decides. So every line has got this guy in, and you can see that although you've got two, it's not like it's going to connect one to here and one to there. It can connect bits of both, and it can change the delay. The reason that delay is so important is because you can actually, the moment you talk of a phase change, and I'll explain that a little bit later, actually in the next video, um, you can actually get array effects. And I'll explain what the ray effects are. Ray is just when you've got more than one antenna. And uh, in the old days, we did it manually. But this magic box can do a lot of it automatically. Now, if you just look at this MIMO box, what we want to do with, um, with MIMO is we want to get two on the same frequency. We want to be able to get twice the data. So we need two channels, people call it, that are decorrelated. That's different from each other. Now, the first easy one to do is polarization. So firstly, and I want to explain this and then I want to tell you to forget about it because this is the best, it's always there, but it can always only give you two channels. So when we go to 4x4, 8x8, polarization can only give us two. The rest we have to achieve with more antennas and that's where this guy really can do some magic. So polarization is the one way. Now, polarization is very simple. Um, you can take a vertical antenna and a horizontal one on this side. So these are two antennas. Okay, they go to the MIMO box. And on this side here, you can take two that's say 45 degrees. I want to explain this because many people are here. And by the way, both sides have got a MIMO box at the base station and here. Now, for polarization, you perhaps with this guy can transmit vertical signal and you can transmit a horizontal signal. In other words, the E field very vertically and horizontally. Now, that is a cheap, simple way to get MIMO. That's why the first, if you've got two by two, polarization is the, the killer. It will always give you very decorrelated channels. The reason for that is a signal that varies like this is not seen by an antenna sensitive to a signal varying like this. Okay, so Polarization gives you very close to full decorrelation and you almost guarantee to get 2 by 2 or twice the data rate. MIMO, if it's 2 by 2 MIMO, you can get only 1.5 speed up, only 1.2, but you want to get twice the data rate and for that polarization always works. It's much more difficult if you go to more antennas. Um, please note that even though this guy is vertical and horizontal, that guy can be plus minus 45 and I'm not going to explain the the nitty gritty of it, but that guy there will just phase his two antennas together, that will create a linear, even though it's plus minus 45, they would, if they combined, half off, 
it will create linear and if they combine it this way they will create vertical so either one of these can convert a signal that's horizontal to they just need to be 90 degrees to each other the reason we can't use more at the moment you use a 45 degree so if i've got if i just wrote from looking from behind this would be vertical this would be horizontal okay now if you combine this antenna and that antenna you can create 45 okay and you can create that so you can communicate as long as it was 90 degrees or it's known as orthogonal at first it also will correct if the one here is not perfectly orthogonal that other guy can actually with the phase with that phase adjustment compensate and makes it perfectly orthogonal so polarization is a magic trick and it works the best and it does not need any reflections this could be free space and you can get two sets of the same data at the same frequency if we look at space in other words forget now say we still two by two but we don't use polarization sometimes that's a reality because if we use omnis it's very difficult to get horizontal omnidirectional so for example if you use two vertical omnis which is what we have to use on yachts and many omnis we can't actually do the horizontal in space you have to do the following so if you look from the top you've got the two antennas that's now your two antennas there and we forget about polarization we're not using it for whatever reason or this could be four by four and polarization give us two we want two more so you space two antennas on the other side of the base station you also have two antennas and this guy here can firstly phase these equally so just pass them equally to the one radio that will give it maximum beam in that direction that is now channel one now if we're lucky enough and there's a nice building here this guy here can change the phase of the other radio sorry the other radio and by changing the phase it can steer the beam so there's a beam now this way for this guy it can actually create a second beam for the second radio pointing to here and this guy will do the same okay and now they can bounce the signal off the side and this beam here will not see much of this one here okay and as long as that not much is good enough they can get two sets of data but you can see it's more difficult it's reliant on having the reflectors around and to be quite honest when you are very far apart even the reflectors because these angles you can see the beams will be sort of still fattish you can't make them thinner and if you are very much further apart like this you can see that and the reflector is here now you need to get one beam here and one beam here beams are about 30 degrees wide and you can see now you can't differentiate between the reflected path and the direct path so when you get further apart generally speaking MIMO actually becomes less effective MIMO works very well when you're in a city and the one could be coming from building on your left and on your right um, please note that if you're in the top in the things of space like this you can steer a beam in the horizontal plane if you look from the side so you'll see polarization um, you can only steer the beam up and down you can't steer it side sideways uh, important point and I think that's the first part uh, look for the second video but you need to understand this first in order to understand what I'm going to do in the next one.